Thank you very much, Mataji, for joining us. You are on the computer now. I am, yes. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Done with Pranam. Uh, on behalf of everybody on this group, yes. we, uh, please accept our humble obeisances, Mataji. Mataji, we are reading the Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 10, which is called The Opulence of the Absolute. Yes. And we are on text 4 and 5 today. So, okay. um, Mataji, it's a long purpose today. Uh, so, uh, you will guide us on how we should be doing it. Um, yes, it's a long purpose because Srila Prabhupada has joined the text 4 and 5. So if an Acharya joins a couple of texts, then we cannot overdo and go and just do one um, slow at a time. So we, we're going to take the whole four and five at once. Wherever we finished, then tomorrow, the next person will start from there on. Okay, Mataji. So we'll have the reflections um, after one or two paragraphs or every paragraph, and everybody can uh, do their... Uh, and reflections on it. And because it's quite a lot of um, qualities to buddhi, gnan, some are some more, there's so many of them. If we just pick up one, then we can take a whole hour discussing it. So um, we'll just take our time and try to cover as many as we can. But it has to be taken as a whole for the moment. Okay. okay. Shall I start first? Yes, yes. Then. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Buddhi Rignanama Samoha, Kshama Satyam Damashama, Sukham Dukham Bao Bao, Bayam Jabayam Evacha, Ahim Sasamata to Stis, Tapo Danam Yasho Yasha, Bavanti Bhava Bhutanam, Matta Eva Prutagvida. So I'll slate slowly and everyone can follow. Buddir Gnana Masam Moha. Buddir Gnana Masam Moha. Shama Satyam Dama Shama. Shama Satyam Dama Shama. Sukha Dukha Bhao Bhao. Sukha Dukha Bhao Bhao. Bhayam Cha Bhayam Evacha. Bhayam Cha Bhayam Evacha. Ahimsa samata tustis. Ahimsa samata tustis tabo. Tapo danam yasho ayasha. Tapo danam yasho ayasha. Bhavanti bhava bhutanam. Bhavanti bhava bhutanam. Matta eva prutagvidaha. Matta eva prudakvida. Anyone else want to try reciting it? It's very sweet. Yes. We should try to cultivate all of all these qualities. So, uh, Shashwin, would you like to read it? Yes. Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Bhutir Gyanam Azamoha. Shama Satyam Dama Shama 
sama Tukang duka Babo Babo Tukang duka Babo Bayang Kabya Bayang Meewaca Bayang Bayang Meewaca Ahim Sa Sama Tatut Tis Ahimsa sama tatus yasu yasha Mata eva bruta gvida. Mata eva bruta gvida. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We can do the word to word. Shall I do word to word or is Sashwin doing it? Uh, we can ask another. Uh, we yeah, can. Sure. Videsh Prabhuji, do you have the uh, Bhagavad Gita with you? Hare Krishna, yes, Mataji. Can you please do the word to word, please? Sure, thank you. Buddhi in, in. Can I just ask which um, chapter and text? So, uh, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10.4, The Opulence of the Absolute. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Buddhi. Buddhi. Intelligence. Intelligence. Dhananam. Nanam knowledge knowledge asamoha asamoha freedom from doubt freedom from doubt shama shama forgiveness forgiveness satyam satyam truthfulness truthfulness dhamma dhamma control of the senses Control of senses. Sama. Sama. Control of the mind. Control of the mind. To come. To come. Happiness. Happiness. To come. To come. Distress. Distress. Bhava. Bhava. Birth. Birth. Abhava. Abhava. Death. Death. Bayam, Bayam, Pia, Pia, Cha, Cha, also, also, Abayam, Abayam, Fearlessness, Fearlessness, Eva, Eva, also, also, Cha, Cha, and, 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 Ahimsa, Ahimsa, non violence. Non violence. Samata. Samada. Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Tusti. Tusti. Satisfaction. Satisfaction. Tapa. Tapa. Penance. Penance. Dhanam. Dhanam. Charity. Charity. Yasa. Yasa. Fame. Fame. Ayasa. Infamy. 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 Bhavanti. Bhavanti. Come about. Come about. Bhava. 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 Nature. Nature. Bhutanam. Bhutanam. Of living entities. Of living entities. Mata. Mata. From me. From me. Eva. Eva. Certainly. Certainly. Prithak Vida. Prithak Vida. Variously arranged. Variously arranged. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, uh, Prabhuji. Translation. Uh, Vinash Prabhuji, would you like, would like to read the translation? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, translation. Um, 
intelligence, knowledge, freedom from doubt and delusion, forgiveness, truthfulness, control of the senses, control of the mind, happiness and distress, birth, death, fear, fearlessness, non-violence, equanimity, satisfaction, austerity, charity, fame and infamy. All these various qualities of living beings are created by me alone. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. I think we can all uh, read the translation once more. Uh, I will say it and kindly repeat. Intelligence, intelligence, intelligence knowledge, 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 freedom uh, from doubt and delusion, freedom, freedom from, from doubt, doubt and delusion, delusion forgiveness, 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 truthfulness, truthfulness, truthfulness control of the senses, control, control of the senses, control of the mind, control, control of the mind, mind, happiness and distress, happiness and the distress, birth, death, fear, birth, birth, birth death, fear, death, fear, fearlessness, fearlessness, non-violence, non-violence, equanimity, equanimity, satisfaction, satisfaction, austerity, charity, fame, austerity, and fame, and infamy, and, and, and infamy. All these various qualities. All, all these various qualities of living beings. Of, of living, living beings are created by me alone. Are created by me alone. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mataji, you would like us to read uh, the perfect two paragraphs. So I will. I will read and then yes. we will start okay. taking reflections. Purport okay. by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Jai. The different qualities of living entities, be they good or bad, are all created by Krishna and they are described here. Intelligence refers to the power of power to analyze things in their proper perspective. And knowledge refers to understanding what is a spirit and what is um, matter. Ordinary knowledge obtained by the university education pertains only to matter and it is not accepted here as knowledge. Knowledge means knowing the distinction between the spirit and matter. In modern education, there is no knowledge about spirit. They are simply taking care of the material elements and bodily needs. Therefore, academic knowledge is not complete. So we'll stop here and try to understand this paragraph at a time. Um, here is this. Buddhir, Gnan, and Asamoha. These three come. No, it's only Buddhir and Gnan. Intelligence and knowledge is um, um, expected. First, we'll, this chapter is a Vibhuti Yoga, opulence of the absolute. And Krishna is um, being looked at from different perspectives. On this particular paragraph, we got um, all the qualities that, that can be cultivated by a, uh, a spirit soul, which are actually created by Krishna. And these are all the qualities of a devotee. In Srimad Bhagavatam, um, Canto 7, Chapter 9, Verse 10 says that if a Brahman has all the Brahminical qualifications, but if he is not a devotee and he is adverse to the lotus feet of the Lord, he is certainly lower. A dog eater, but who is dedicated everything, mind, word, activities, wealth and life to the Supreme Lord, that person is higher for the simple reason that in spite of being all the educated, having a birth in a Brahmin family, if the person cannot recognize Krishna, um, then uh, he is lower than a person born in a very low um, Shudra family, yet uh, has a, a dedicated mind, words, activities, wealth, and life to Krishna. 
that person understands that Krishna is my hero. I am a zero. I am nothing. I am subordinate to Krishna. Krishna is my master. But to be able to understand that for other people is quite difficult. Here we are going to discuss intelligence and knowledge, buddhi and gnana. Um, intelligence is just about the mind, and the mind is just about the senses. So, if we have the knowledge of senses, mind, and intelligence, then we'll be able to find out the difference between a soul, a spirit soul, super soul, and relation of super soul um, and a spirit soul. And that is the proper knowledge. Here, Srila Prabhupada has given a very nice passage in his uh, class, Buddha A spirit soul does not die, eternal. So the spirit knowledge continues. That is why spiritual knowledge is more important. Ordinary knowledge, um, which you got uh, from um, university, that only applies to the body. And that um, knowledge will be finished, whether you are a pharmacist or a doctor, whatever. At the time of death, that knowledge is forgotten and the spirit soul moves on. But um, the intelligence which has been purified um, becomes a spiritual intelligence. That intelligence will continue. If you cultivate spiritual intelligence, even 1%, 2%, that can render your greater service because it will continue. Once spiritual knowledge is begun, it will not be stopped. Um, because it, the, the best thing is to finish the same percent uh, of the spiritualizing of those intelligence in this lifetime, which may not be possible for everyone, but whatever little bit is done to spiritualize our consciousness is very important. Um, the knowledge is... Gnan. And that gnan is um, the knowledge of the body, um, the normal material um, knowledge. But if that knowledge is um, transferred into the spiritual, right? Sorry, I'm a little bit confused here. Spiritual knowledge means knowledge of the spirit soul, supreme soul and relationship between the soul and the super soul. Spiritual knowledge brings complete um, happiness. Spiritual knowledge was cultivated by the Aryans. Um, ordinary people, they have moved from one species to another for thousands of lifetimes. They've been moving in, um, in the Laksh Chaurasi for hundreds and hundreds of years. And after that, come to a human body. But if they, in the human body, they continue um, with... Um, eating, sleeping, mating, and um, defending, then they are just as good as animals. Uh, human body is uh, meant, meant for a higher purpose. Srila uh, Prabhupada was once asked, um, because in India in those days, they were all, everybody was cultivating spiritual knowledge. That is why they were called Aryans. Um, once Prabhupada was asked, did, did they have so many hospitals? Um, in your time. And Prabhupada said, no, um, people were more spiritually inclined. They didn't bother going to the hospital that much. If they really wanted something, they would go to an Ayurvedic doctor, find some um, herb and um, finish the um, whatever the problem they had. They, there was, the intention was not to live long. The intention was to complete the um, spiritual life in one lifetime. So that was a spiritual knowledge they had. Okay, I'll stop here and ask a reflection for other people, please. Then we'll talk about some more. Some more. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you very much. So does that mean that um, people didn't want to live longer uh, because they would attain their spiritual knowledge in a certain time because uh, they, in school, they were also taught about spirituality right from the beginning. 
not like no. us. They wanted to live longer, long enough to be able to ascertain their um, their uh, spiritual life in in the next life. So they didn't want to die like a tree or a, like a tree can stand for long, long time. A pair of um, that man's uh, something that goes. I, sorry, I've forgotten. I'm, I'm a little bit confused at the moment. It's okay. But uh, people wanted to live long and they would live long, long time until they find the aim of life and get to the goal. And if that took them 100 years or 200 years, they were prepared to live. But the intention was to not, not to enjoy the material life. The intention was to get to their goal, to go back to Godhead. And they were doing it to the best of their ability. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Anybody else has a question or reflection? Okay, Mataji, Hare we... Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yeah, I just wanted to reflect on something about intelligence, actually, and the knowledge. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the 15.5, uh, So Krishna says in that, I am seated in everyone's heart. And from me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. So by all Vedas, I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta, and I am the knower of the Vedas. So my, my reflection on this is that actually any knowledge, any knowledge, whether it's spiritual or material, you can't have it without Krishna. Krishna is the key. He actually gives you remembrance and he gives you the knowledge. And um, that is what I'm reflecting on for this one. Anything you do, whether I'm, I'm at work, whether I'm at home, any intelligence or knowledge I'm using actually is given to me by, by Krishna. And that's what um, I think. So anything I do. So you have to actually, whatever work you do, whatever you do, is you have to appreciate Krishna first. Thank you. Yes, I think the material knowledge is, um, the consciousness is covered and that's why it becomes material knowledge. But as we begin to purify our consciousness, that material knowledge um, begins to be spiritualized. It's just like putting an iron in the fire. And eventually the, um, the iron bar will take the, um, quality of a fire. So material knowledge can be spiritualized into spiritual knowledge. Thank you, Mataji. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Path Prabhuji, uh, Danvat Pranam Prabhuji and Govinda Prem Prabhuji, Danvat Pranam. Hare Krishna. Also, Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. We also have two new devotees today, three new devotees. We have Bhamini Mataji, we have um, uh, Nirula Ben Mataji uh, from LA who has joined us. And we also had Alka Mataji. I think she might have uh, had a problem and Ishani Mataji. So welcome to this group. Sorry for the interruption Mataji, just wanted to acknowledge them. We can probably go on to the second words, uh, second paragraph unless anybody wants to reflect. Does anyone, to give, anyone want to give any reflection? No. Okay. Asamoha, freedom from the doubt and delusion can be achieved when one is not hesitant and when he understands the transcendental philosophy. Slowly but surely he becomes free from bewilderment. Nothing should be accepted blindly. Everything should be accepted with care and caution. Kshama, tolerance and forgiveness should be practiced. One should be tolerant and excuse the minor offenses of others. Satyam, truthfulness, means that the facts should be presented as they are for the benefit of others. Facts should not be misrepresented. According to the social conventions, 
it is said that one can speak truth only when it is palatable to others. But that is not truthfulness. Truth should be spoken in a straightforward way so that others will understand actually what the facts are. If a person is a thief and if the people are warned that he is a thief, that is a truth. Although sometimes the truth is unpalatable, one should not refrain from speaking it. Truthfulness demands that the fact be presented as they are for the benefit of others. That is a definition of truth. Now, if a doctor says to us, you lay down and you cannot get up from the bed for the next 24 hours. If you want to be quiet, it to be to cured, then we have to use the intelligence and stay and do what the doctor tells us to do. Similarly, on, on a spiritual platform, if a sadhu, um, guru or a shastra says to us, do this, this austerity, um, and this, these are the instructions, follow the four principles, chant this many rounds, we have to understand and if we want to move um, into the spiritual life and, and get the proper result of the injunction, then we have to follow it. Even if we don't like getting, getting up at four o'clock in the morning and start a mangla at half past four or um, start fasting on ekadashi from grains. It, it's a little bit dislike, but it has to be done because a fasadu says, um, a guru says, or even the Shastra, because often people don't meet all three. They might meet one by accident, like a sadhu, or end up reading it in a book from a Shastra. But if it is a proper injunction, then it's best followed if you want to progress in, in spiritual life. Now, by doing so, uh, sometimes um, just by watching the senior devotees who have practiced uh, the austerities of um, um, fasting on Ekadashi, getting up at um, early morning in a Brahma Murat, um, if, if, if we can find out how they relate to the material problems, then we can do the same and we, we follow in their footsteps and we'll be able to appreciate the spiritual life that way. Um, Asam moha means um, you're feeling safe, stable, and free from anxiety. One is not bewildered by any problem one has to face. Um, the faith is very important. Um, by, on the time when you come on the sam moha, because of the spiritual uh, uh, intelligence and the knowledge that you have, you will begin to put faith in a sadhu or a guru. And if the guru says, do this, um, you have to have some kind of faith to do it. In um, so many years ago, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati told Srila Prabhupada, go to rest and preach. And it took him a lot of uh, determination and full faith in his guru to be able to go to America. Even when the guru wasn't present, he was able to do it. And the same Srila Prabhupada told Tamar Krishna Goswami, sitting in a Mayapur room, he said, you are going to go to China and preach. Now, at, the, at that time, Tamal Krishna Goswami, he didn't speak the Chinese language. He didn't have any contacts. Um, China was a very, very strong communist country and not many people would even go there. You were not able to get in there. What to speak of start preaching Krishna consciousness. But Tamal Krishna Goswami had full faith in Srila Prabhupada and he went there. One year later, he returned with two Chinese devotees and entered the same room from where he was ordered to go to China. That is faith. That is awesome move. That's complete awesome move. They are not attached to anything. It's a complete faith in, uh, in what the guru says. A lot of us can't handle that. It's, it's very complicated, but we can make an effort and um, Slowly we'll find that, yes, I'm beginning to trust what my guru tells me, or I'm beginning to trust what the temple devotees say, you know, get up early, you'll find it very happy, you'll be, you'll be all right. Even if you don't have a cup of tea in the morning, you'll be fine. 
And so many people think, no, I can't live without a cup of tea or a coffee. I have to have it in the morning. But then you see so many other people not doing it in the temple. Then you think, okay, well, let me try once or twice. And in the beginning, it's difficult, but slowly it eases out and you can give up. Now, here, Asam Moha and Krishna is also discussing Kshama. Kshama is Kshama, Satyam. Satyam is truthfulness. The truthfulness here, Srila Prabhupada um, explains it as an absolute truth. If you know the difference between spirit soul and uh, um, supreme soul and the super soul, all three, and then you understand that the place of absolute truth, that God is great, that is a truthfulness. You don't beat around the bush, um, as Srila Prabhupada says, you call spade a spade, which is pretty difficult because we have to live in a, a normal community. We have to live in the material world, but we can at least make an effort and try to be as close to Srila Prabhupada's orders as you can. For this, we also have to use our spiritual intelligence. Once we had, um, um, there was a Brahmin, he had taken a vow never to speak lies, always speak truth. He wouldn't want to use his uh, spiritual intelligence because when you are doing something like uh, Ati Niyamagraha, insisting on doing something without bending, then it uh, becomes Ati Niyamagraha and that becomes very difficult and it can stop your bhakti. Now this Brahmin had decided never to speak a lie. He was always telling the truth. Once he was working and a man came running, he was really frightened. And he said, some robbers are after me. They are going to kill me. Can I hide somewhere? So the Brahmin gave him a place. Oh, yes, you can, you can hide here, no problem. But about an hour later, the robbers came along. And he said, we are looking for this man. It's well important. We want to find out something from him. And because the Brahmin was not um, going to tell lies, he showed them exactly where the man was hiding. Mm -hmm. The robbers went there and killed the man. When the Brahmin died, he, he realized that he had to pay for the, um, the person's death. Um, he had to pay all the karma for the person's death, for telling the truth. Because by telling the truth, he did not use his uh, intelligence, the spiritual intelligence or material way, whichever way, but he did not use it. And he insisted on telling the truth. That, that is not the calling the spade a spade. Prabhupada says we should call a spade a spade, yes, but not the way that uh, we don't use our intelligence at all. And then comes Kshama, Shama and a Dhamma and a Kshama. Kshama is forgiveness. And uh, Shama. And Dhamma is a control of mind and control of uh, senses. Now, the senses will only be controlled. They have to be disciplined. If the body can handle one piece of cake the size of a tennis ball, but if one eats half a cake, calling it a piece of cake, then the nature is going to react because the body does not have the capacity to digest the whole a cake. Controlling the sense is controlling the sense organ, which works under the mind, and mind works under the intelligence. We need the mercy of a sadhu, guru, and Krishna to be able to control uh, our mind and senses. It, it's, everybody has a um, desire for eating and sex urge. Both, they are just natural desire put into anyone. So it is necessity, but they have to be disciplined. You have to control. Eating is controlled by just insisting on um, eating prashadam. First become a vegetarian, of course, and then uh, start eating prashadam. A sex urge is controlled by um, uh, getting married. Then um, no um, sex outside the marriage. Um, staying faithful to the wife the same way. Um, mind contains the memories of past life. So a, a desire can erupt um, from the sight of a jalebi or a halwa, taste of halwa. And the person will want more and more, but it has to be controlled. The mind has to be disciplined. 
And mind is like a child. It can drag a devotee into the Maya if the devotee is not careful. In a lecture in San Francisco, Srila Prabhupada said that the brahmacharya means celibacy. The more you restrain your sex life, the more you become strong in your spiritual life. But this restraint does not mean restraint artificially. Otherwise, a person can have psychological problems. The sexers can be disciplined by getting married. It's very simple. Eating can be disciplined by just taking prashadam. And uh, sex urge can be uh, disciplined by getting married, um, taking a license. That way, the urge is controlled, which will make one very strong in spiritual life. Brahmacharya, both Dhamma and Shama, are easier to control because the mind is strong. The happiness and happiness in spiritual life are simply that brings um, bliss. In, in a material life, the happiness and unhappiness are the two sides of the same coin and it always brings um, misery. The happiness and unhappiness in spiritual life always brings bliss. Like if you're going to the temple, you feel very happy. But if you're not going to the temple, then you feel unhappy. Like in the lockdown, we can't go to the temple, but that does not make us unhappy. We are unhappy that we can't go to the temple. But then we find chanting to do, home deity worship to do, uh, Zoom meetings uh, for association. So it, it keeps us happy. In spite of being unhappy, we are happy. In the old age, a person gets old. The person has been going to the temple all the time. And in the old age, they can't go. They're not, um, the body will not allow them to go. But the person, they will chant, they will recite the bhajans, and they do some home worship at home, and they'll find the bliss. They remain blissful all the time. So the spiritual happiness um, is always blissful, whether it's unhappiness or happiness. Okay, now can I have some more reflections? I've given my reflection to this. Hare Krishna. Pruti, do you have a question? Yeah. I saw your body language, yes. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, yes, yeah, so I have two questions. I'll be very fast. Okay, okay so the first question is... Uh, can you speak a bit loudly, please? Okay, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, fine. Yeah, so my first question is, when you talk about uh, the super soul, which is Paramatma, it's uh, the, the definition, it's, uh, uh, it's in someone's heart, in people's heart. But again, in the Bhagavad Gita, it's saying that there's something called individuality. Everyone is very individual. So how does that connect? Like, yeah. The individuality is a soul. The soul is individual. Uh -huh. The super soul is one. In all the, the super soul in all the bodies is the same. The souls are different. In each body you see, in each species, there's a, there is a soul. But all of them have super soul. The super soul is one. Does that answer the question? Mataji, just a clarification, because when I want to uh, um, clarify this. So I'm soul 001. Yes. Soul 002, you are soul 0108, yes. uh, like that. So we all have our individual soul. identity as soul. But the super soul, which is Paramatma, is just one. It's just one. So yes. 001 is attached to Paramatma 1. And there is only Paramatma 1. One Paramatma and souls are different. And the souls have the individuality. I'm sorry, but in, in the second chapter, it says that even Krishna is individual. It's Krishna is individual, yeah. Krishna is a person. Yes, Krishna yeah. is a person. And the souls are persons as well. But we are connected by super soul. All of us are un under control. That will come in about, I think, chapter 16. We'll come to that. Okay. I have yeah. another question. Chapter 13. Chapter 13, yes. Yeah, chapter 13. Yes. Yes, yeah. ask another question. Yeah, so you talked about the sex desire. Yes. And so my question is, uh, Srila Prabhupada says in the rules, if not, I'm not wrong, he says that we should only use sex when uh, 
is for procreation. Yes. So is is the desire for sex a wrong thing? Because we should just do it for procreation. So the other desires are they like we shouldn't? Well, the sex desire is controlled by getting married. Within the marriage, um, people can handle like normally, um, as on the orders of Srila Prabhupada, um, it is only enjoyed about once a month uh, when the person is trying to have a child. And that is when the desire is satisfied. The other days, um, desire is diverted into other Krishna conscious activities and it, uh, it sort of it dies away. But when you want a child, then you satisfy the desire. Yeah, so, so if uh, someone is planning to have only two children, yes. is that the limited uh, number of times they can have sex? That's just yes. the question. But there are people who have 10 children, 15 children, they can have children. Some of our presidents, temple presidents, they have eight or nine children, but they, they have it within their marriage uh, wedlocks, only within the marriage. They don't go out. So within the marriage, as many children as you want, yes, you can. Have. But all the children you make, you know, you try to make them Krishna conscious. If you can make a Krishna conscious child Krishna conscious, uh, even if it is 10 children, it's acceptable. The desire to make them Krishna conscious, sometimes the children don't turn up as a devotee, but you make every effort to make them into a devotee. So just to clarify, so there should be no sex with, uh, if the purpose is not to procreate. That's what Prabhupada says, yes. Okay. That's the same given by Prabhupada. Okay, thank you so much. I think Richa Mataji has got a question. Hi, yes. Krishna. Danvaj Pran. I'm sorry I joined a little late. I was in a college class. Okay. Just wanted to add on to what um, Kriti Mataji said. Yes. Uh, they, they, there was a, I think I was reading a, or hearing a lecture or reading somewhere, or maybe I was told by a devotee, any three of them, I don't remember. Yeah. I was told that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu once said, that if he had an option, he would have produced 100 kids and make all of them Krishna conscious. <laughs> but he said, but then he was like, it's not possible in this material nature because then it will pervert the image of Lord Shri Krishna if I do something like that. So it is better that I, I stay happy with what I can do, but I make sure that I am or my kids or every anyone I meet are in perfect Krishna consciousness rather than giving like half consciousness to all of them, half are believing in Krishna, half, half are like doing both the things materialistic and spiritual. It is better to do what is in your capacity, but doing it perfectly. That's what I was told. Hare Krishna. Yes. I uh, mean, we got uh, one of our acharyas, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He had more than 10 children. And he tried to the best of his ability to turn the children to Krishna conscious. Two of them, the eldest and the youngest, became proper Krishna conscious. Um, the Lalita Prasad, he became an impersonalist, but he was Krishna conscious, but in an impersonal way. And uh, Bimal Prashad was Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati. He became a proper Vaishnav. The children in between, they did not become Krishna conscious. But that doesn't mean Bhakti Vinod Thakur didn't try. He tried his best. But children, when you, we can try our best, but the children also come with their uh, baggage from the previous life. They may or may not turn out Krishna, um, Krishna conscious. But we try to our best of our ability until the child is 21 or 25, whichever way, we try our best. After that, they have their own um, life to lead. Hare Krishna, any more questions? Prahlad, any more reflections? No, no reflections from my side. Okay. Mataji, we can continue. We still have 15, 15 minutes. Okay. Control of the senses means that the senses should not be used for unnecessary personal enjoyment. There is no prohibition against meeting the 
proper needs of the senses, but unnecessary sense enjoyment is detrimental for spiritual advancement. Therefore, the senses should be restrained from unnecessary use. Similarly, one should restrain the mind from unnecessary thoughts. That is called shama. One should not spend one's time pondering over the earning, earning money. That is a misuse of thinking power. The mind should be used to control the prime necessity of human beings, and that should be presented authoritatively. The power of thought should be developed in association with the persons who are authorities in the scriptures, saintly persons and spiritual masters, those whose thinking is highly developed. Sukham, the pleasure of happiness, should always be in that which is favorable for the cultivation of the spiritual knowledge of Krishna consciousness. And similarly, that which is painful or which causes distress is, is that which is unfavorable for the cultivation of Krishna consciousness. Anything favorable for the development of Krishna consciousness should be accepted and anything unfavorable should be rejected. The next, uh, next one is just a small one, so I'll, I'll take it. Yeah? Okay. Bhava, birth, should be understood to refer to the body. As far as the soul is concerned, there is neither birth or death. That we have discussed in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita. Birth and death apply to one's embodiment in the material world. Fear is due to worrying about the future. A person in Krishna consciousness has no fear because of by his activities, he is sure to go back to spiritual sky, back home, back to Godhead. Therefore, in future, therefore, his future is very bright. Others, however, do not know what the future holds. They have no knowledge of what the next life holds. So they are therefore in the constant anxiety. If we want to get free from anxiety, then the best course is to understand Krishna and be situated always in Krishna consciousness. In that way, we will be free from all fear. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it is 11 to 37. It is stated, Bhayam Dvitya Bini Vastaha Syat. Fear is caused by our absorption in the illusory energy. But those who are free from the illusory energy, energy Though, those who are confident that they are not the material body, that they are spiritual parts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and who are therefore engaged in the transcendental service of the Supreme Godhead, have nothing to fear. Their future is very bright. This fear is a condition of persons who are not in... The fear is in the condition of persons who are not in Krishna consciousness. Abhayam, the fearlessness, is possible only, in, only for one in Krishna consciousness. So, so we're going to discuss Bhava and Abhava. Bhava is birth and Abhava is death. And then Bhava Sagar comes in. Sagar is a ocean and Bhava Sagar is ocean of the birth and death. A person keeps traveling in birth and death, life after life after life, keeps moving from animal body to um, other species to the, in the, into the sea, into the air, into the sky, on the land, but it keeps moving in um, thousands of uh, species, and that is Bhava Sagar. And uh, moving in the Bhava Sagar is only once in a so, after so many lifetimes that one comes across to meet um, a guru who can get them out of the Bhava Sagar. Otherwise, it only applies to the body, which is temporary, and eternal soul is not affected. 
the eternal soul is moving about in the Bhavasagar for a long, long time. Material concept, the body is perishable, full of ignorance and completely miserable. So the people in general keep the same idea that, well, I'm going to die, then I'll be born or I'm going to die. Or now recently um, people think uh, rest in peace. So until the judgment day you rest, but that is not supported by our um, Sanatan Dharma. As soon as a soul leaves one body, immediately another body is taken in. Um, if a human being dies, immediately the Preth body begins to form. And after 13 days, the Preth body goes to Pitrulok and takes another body. It's moved, um, a Preth body is uh, released and the body in the other hell is taken place or human body. Now, Guru can only get you out of this Bhavasagar. It's just like going and traveling in the Atlantic Ocean. You got a uh, Atlantic Ocean, which is tumultuous. It's, it's, it's plenty of um, bad climate, raining and everything. And in that, if you get your own little uh, boat and you start traveling, you are likely to die drown. So if you want to cross the Atlantic Ocean, you need a proper ship, a captain of a ship. Um, and a good atmosphere to be able to cross the Atlantic Ocean peacefully. So we have to find a person, a proper person who can guide you um, in the, into the Bhavasagar, um, follow the, his instruction. Is a proper ship um, like Iskon or there are plenty of other religions. They have their own little places. But as far as we are concerned, we got Iskon as our ship and Srila Prabhupada as our uh, captain. And the human body has to be utilized. If you're really human and you've been practicing the principles, chanting the rounds, then you are going to, you are utilizing your human body to be able to get out of the um, Bhavasagar, to get to, to the other end, to get to the uh, Golok Vrindavan. Okay, um, we got five minutes, so I'll stop here and then hopefully someone, someone else will give their reflection. Hare Krishna, anybody would like to say something? How would they take bow and above? I, I didn't even talk about fear because there's not enough time, but uh, that's also a long one. Maybe I can uh, get a few of my concepts clarified of fear. So okay. people who are not in Krishna consciousness, Mataji, yes. uh, they probably have this fear always, and they are always anxious. But I think, um, am I right in believing that people who are in Krishna consciousness are abhai, they don't have any fear because they know that I'm the soul and I'm going to be taken care of. Krishna is my captain. Yes. He's going to take uh, me over this transatlantic ocean. And yes. um, even if this body goes, there'll be another body. There'll be another body. If, But my aim is to go to uh, Golok Vrindavan and I should not fear. So I is that my right understanding, Mataji? Yes. To the point you are, um, sub, um, to the point you are surrendered, that much uh, the faith you have. And that much you can, you will be able to trust. Um, there are plenty of uh, devotees who still fear because even though they are surrendered, they think, "Will I? Can I do this? Can I not do this?" But because they are chanting regularly and they are practicing the principles, the surrender becomes more and more. And by the time they come to the that time, the the surrender is complete. The faith is complete. So it's easy to transfer to Golok Vrindavan. But um, like Srila uh, now in the Bhagavad Gita, we got ye yathamam prapadyante tam satathaiva bhajami aham. Uh, Krishna says that to the degree the person is surrendered, that much I reciprocate. So that comes in. Richa Mataji has got another reflection. Mataji? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 
Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, just um, in a few, uh, in one of the lecture I was hearing uh, a while back, probably last year, mm -hmm. where we were talking about fear and tolerance. Mm -hmm. So there was the whole process that um, that lecture talked about that how fear comes. It's also there in Bhagavad Gita that first of all we have ego. Now ego generates desires. When desires not fulfilled, they give us fear. The fear of them not getting fulfilled and our sense not getting gratified brings, brings us anger and frustration. When anger and frustration comes, I've always heard this, like Krishna always says this, your, your sahan shakti and your calmness. I don't know what you say it in Sanskrit. There's a way to say Tolerance? it. Tolerance? Shama. Is it Shama or Dhamma? No, no, it's uh, it's the calmness, the vinamrata. Yeah, vinamrata. It's always haunted. You are no more a calm person. Your thoughts are no more in a straight line once you're angry and you're frustrated, which makes a person go in, in, in the completely opposite track of the spiritual life. So basically, every negative emotion, it always arises by the not fulfillment of their personal sense gratification desire. So once we, we, we start keeping our desires in control and it will stay in control by this. I also heard this in a lecture that when we chant, we hear. So our mind, it gets purified. When our mind, it gets purified, whatever we will talk will get purified and also whatever we'll taste will get purified. Now, when our tongue is getting purified, it means our stomach is getting purified. We no more have the desires of eating salty, um, sour, spicy. Now, when our stomach and our taste is uh, in our control, our our genitals are in our control. It's like a whole line, the center of the human body, Prabhupada says, by chanting will stay in control because all the emotions are always and always developed by these four parts in the human body, mind, tongue, stomach, and the genitals. And if we actually try to even look at it scientifically, it is true. Our thoughts, they haunt us. Our taste, they give us so many hormonal imbalances in our body if we eat too spicy. Our stomach is the reason why like these days people even kill others just to get food. We kill animals to get uh, to satisfy our tongue. And our genitals, people perform so many sexual activities just to satisfy their that necessity of life, which they have put as a center of their attention. So if we keep all these things in control, our, our desires will stay in control. With our desires staying in control, all our emotions, our thoughts, our negative vibes will stay in control. And automatically our surroundings will become positive. And from that, we'll not be able to take fear because fear also brings irrational decisions. We make, we freak out. We make such rash, irrational decisions that we regret it for the rest of our life. But now if we compare the same thing to people who are devotees in Krishna consciousness, they already know it. They know these four chakras in the body and they know that by chanting, they will be able to overcome and conquer anything in this, on, on this planet. And they will also realize this material things are so temporary that, that all of them, they have an action and reaction in the end. Whether it's fear, it is going to be an action and reaction. Just yesterday, I was going through my pictures on my phone, which I clicked in 2017, 2018. There was a quote I wrote even back then. I think I was 12. I wrote that um, consciousness is not being awake but it is by how a person reacts to a situation or a circumstance that is consciousness. So if uh, so, I believe that devotees are very conscious of what they are eating. That's why we are told we, we must eat sattvic korak, yes. which doesn't have much uh, spicy, sour, salt, and all that medium korak. Our, dress, our dressing should be like very simple, not too showing body, not too much weird clothes. And whatever we think, we should always live in simplicity. Simplicity is spirituality. 
that is what it is said. So I think I could connect uh, all these things to how fear arises. And um, yeah, that's all I can say. Hare Krishna, please forgive me if I said anything wrong out of knowledge. No, 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 it was good knowledge, yes. Thank you very much, yes. Thanks for the reflection. Thank Hare you. Krishna, thank you so much. Thank you, that was very nice reflection, yes. Um, Hare Krishna, any yeah. more questions, reflections? I know we have exhausted our time for today, but uh, we can take one more question or reflection. Any question? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Yes. Hare Krishna, Avinash Prabhu. I can just reflect on one thing, actually. Yes. Uh, about fearlessness, Abhay. Uh, Prabhupada, actually, he lived by his name, Abhay Charanavinda. Yes. So he actually, he went to America at the age of 70. He didn't have any, you know, money. He suffered three heart attacks in the ship. And when he went to America, he still continued. He wanted to preach. He wanted to listen to his, what, his instruction by the guru. Any other person who had had a, three heart attacks, no money, he would have probably say, I want to return back to India and I, bet, I better get cured with you know, whatever I'm suffering. So Prabhupada, actually, he is an example of fearlessness. Yes. And he was a true devotee. And that's, that's the footsteps, actually, we all are aspiring towards, but that is too high goal to go towards. And even if we can't get the dust of whatever, little bit of dust of Srila Prabhupada, then that we can achieve something. And that's what my reflection is for today. Yes. Hare Krishna. Definitely. Definitely. It's a very nice reflection. Uh, just one more thing I wanted to say. Yes. That even if uh, someone doesn't really believe in fighting and all those things, and even he has a bit faith in Krishna, in Bhagavad Gita, I think chapter 2, chapter 3, somewhere there, Krishna guarantees that I will take care of the person who even has a little bit of emotion towards me. If uh, if even a bit he tries to take a, one step towards me, I will take thousand steps towards him and protect him from all the wrong things he has to do. But uh, also Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that it's not necessary that you have to just to be a devotee of Krishna, you have to perform all the all the uh, rituals or, you know, actually be in devotion, uh, actually be in that mode of complete, complete devotion. Uh, even if one says the name of Krishna once from his tongue, he is a devotee of Krishna already and Krishna will be responsible for each and every breath that that person takes till the end of the day, till the end of his lifetime. Krishna will take his responsibility. Even, even if, um, but that doesn't mean we take advantage of, the, of those things. It's just for the Mayavadi people to show how kind Krishna is that even after us, just uh, like not even offering love to him, not even doing the normal uh, small thing that he's asking for, that is patram, falam, pushpam, not even that, but just saying Krishna, he's already accepting us. Because I can relate it to a personal example. When I started ISKCON, I always had a self-doubt. Will Krishna actually accept me? I have done so many wrong things in my life. Will that Supreme Personality really accept me like he has to all those people? Will he bring an end to my problems or is he really listening to me? And I, I would actually try talking to him and I'd be like, uh, just please show me some sign that you have actually accepted me. And he showed me that sign by the love that I got from all the Vaishnava devotees in temple. I got so much love. I think I said this before that everything related to Krishna that I have today, I've not even spent a single penny on it. It's all gifted by all the devotees on different occasions, whether it's a birthday, whether it's, um, it's an auspicious day, everything is gifted. Even the deity that I have, my grandma, before she left this planet, she gifted me with Ladu Gopal, just blessed me with it. So uh, that's how I understood that Krishna will not just come to me like that. Like he, of course, has accepted me somewhere or the other, even though I'm sinful, 
which I need to change, but he has accepted me. It's not that he has dis disregarded me that, oh, you've done this thing, just get out of my house. He will, he's not an ordinary parent. He, he is a supreme personality parent, which will even accept the most fallen soul, like the worst, worst soul. So th th that's the, another reflection that I had when we talk about uh, Krishna and his acceptance and, and surrender unto him. Because even, even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he always, uh, he always accepted even those who were Muslims, even those who were Christian, those who probably did the work of cleaning toilets. He went and gave Krishna Prem to everyone. Take this, take this, take Krishna Prem. Like my mother. Hare Krishna, thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Vishaka Mataji has something to say. Hare Krishna, uh, I like Richa Mataji. I would say even in my life, uh, as Richa Mataji said, you know, just once or twice you remember him and he makes sure that he looks after you. In my case, I was young and yes, I used to go to the temple and yes, I chanted a bit and that was it. And then I got married and then I forgot about him completely, completely means not even a thought of bowing down once in a moon, in, in a day. But how, because he was so, I feel like he's like a mother can be so kind, but he's like hundred times a mother. But he came in my life, he in a, like, you know, I was presented with Gaurnitai by a devotee, which even I wasn't, I was, I wasn't even sure whether I'll be able to look after them. Oh my God, I, I got so worried when I was gifted. Normally people would just be over the moon when you get something like that. But I was like worried, oh, what will I do? And somehow they came in my life in such a way. And, uh, and I just, feel that everything has happened in my life is he's blessed he's 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 looked after me as if like a cotton wool you know in a, that's how much he is um, uh, he's merciful so I agree just once one little devotion and he will never forget you that's my realization yes if we call Krishna uh, without expecting anything in return you know just call out to Krishna just to be able to serve him and he does listen and he does react, definitely. Yeah, wow, Jay. <laughs> but Mataji, yeah. remember there was a lecture where we were told we should never test Krishna. That's yeah. when I felt really bad. I felt so bad that I actually was trying to test Krishna. That's when I realized that we, and like me, I am no person who has any authority to test Krishna and even ask him to prove him to, to me, someone like me. Like I can't ask him that, oh, come on, give me your documents. Prove me I'm your, I'm your daughter. Prove me all these things. I felt I realized that day that you're never supposed to test Krishna. But I think so many devotees, they go through that phase where they are so much uh, in, in self-ignorance. We can call that self-ignorance where they do not value themselves and they feel that constantly they have that feeling that no one is accepting them, no one is accept, accepting them. So even God will not accept uh, him or her, whoever that is. If people can't accept, who is God to accept? Generally, these are the types of questions that someone has. But then I just realized that it was a bad thing when I heard that lecture. Yeah, well, you didn't know that you should not be challenging Krishna. So now that you know, you won't do it, you see? And in ignorance, we do some stuff, which uh, once we realize, we don't do it. We, we need somebody to tell us, like a sadhu or a guru. Some, somebody has to tell us before we know. Otherwise, because we are like child. In spiritual life, we are children. We need someone older to tell us what to do. Yeah, yeah I agree. It's very important. Sorry. Sorry, Richa, what were you saying? I'm saying I agree. Like the knowledge that we get even from this group association, it's like so much more than anyone can expect. So many people, they think like, like let's take me. If I read a shloka and I'll be like, oh, this is all I know. Yeah, my understanding is perfect. It's okay. It's, it can't be anything more. But then when I hear some other people saying, I'm like, oh my God, I really need to write this point. I need to know even from this paragraph, this thing can be connected. Like mind, you know, that boxed mind which is not ready to open up and that's why i think it's a very necessary for someone 
to actually get in association of devotees, read together, understand, because all the views are in the end related to Krishna. And you, you never know what you can learn from anyone else. That, that's why I love this group. Thank you, Kirtika Mataji, again, for making this group. Danwar Pranam to you. And all the mentors, even Raj Kishori Mataji, Danwar Pranam to you. I really love your lectures. I do understand them. The, the one thing that I love about ISKCON is that it is it actually matches my layman's language, my, my poor English language, and I can understand it, even with practical examples. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hare Krishna. I think uh, we've exhausted our time Good today. Time. Yes. And um, I'll hand over to Path Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Uh, especially thanks to our great Prasikishwari Mataji. Uh, she very nicely explained the good qualities of her devotees, like intelligence, knowledge, freedom from doubt and delusion, forgiveness, truthfulness, control of senses, control of mind, happiness and distress, also uh, the fear and fearlessness. Uh, we are uh, long discussing about the fear and fearlessness. It is the, all the good quality when we're taking surrender to the Krishna. Uh, Krishna is called Abhacharana Rabindra. You see, we, can, we cannot be fear at all because Krishna is within our heart. When a devotee, he knows that one, what is the destination so that he never supposed to be fearful at the, any circumstance. But on the other hand, the materialistic person, he is always fearful. All the time he is fearful about his death, his position, the power, his... Uh, Everything is a fearfulness, but still he is a fearfulness also. He cannot control it at one day to go. But a devotee, Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma, no Swachati, no Kankhyati. They are who is in, situated in Brahma, who is surrendered to God, surrendered to the lotus feet of Krishna. There is a, no need to fear, it is a totally fearfulness. So it's no need to. Uh, Everybody here in this association are so intelligent, are giving their wonderful comments and uh, realization. But the thing is that, or simply thing is that, we are supposed to be go to the Krishna, surrender to the Krishna, and Krishna is our supreme Father. He is the Sruhudam Sarva Bhutanam. He is take care of us. There is no need to fearful. We are fearlessness. Hare Krishna. Thanks very much. We have already exhausted our time. I request everyone, please unmute yourself and chant Hare Krishna Mantra once for a glorification of Hare Krishna, Prashki Shri Mataji, Hare Krishna. We show of uh, tomorrow is the Brukman Prabhupada and the rest of the part of the Prabhupada purport will continue uh, by His Grace Rukma Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, please chant Hare Krishna Mantra. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Hare Krishna. 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 Hare